Hi, my name's John Huff. I'm the technical director of Mikau Technologies. And we're going to take a little time today to unbox a microcube just to familiarize ourselves with what comes with your order. So when you first open the box, you'll find introductory material. And the important things here are the URL for the website, as well as a QR code that allow you to register your system and yourself. The value to you in that is being able to get access to technical support like tutorial videos or further documentation. When we designed our packaging, one goal was to have recyclable materials. So the whole package is from recycled cardboard. And the, the first item we have is the micro queue itself. It comes in this uh, leather satchel, just to give a little bit of protection to the finish. So here we have the micro queue. And that's always going to be in your shipment. The rest of these items on this layer are optional items, such as an external battery. And this allows you to extend the life of your battery when you're using your system off the grid. You could also purchase a docking station. And the docking station allows you to charge the micro queue, an external battery, and the transfer data. And then when we get to the bottom layer, we have uh, a lot of optional things, but then some standard as well. So you'll always have the power over ethernet injector, and this allows you to charge your system or just power it uh, and connect it to your network. If you have a dock, you'll also receive the docking power supply that uh, allows you to charge your batteries. And here are some options. Um, if you have our six channel ICS, this allows you to connect standard BNC cables. If you have a tachometer, this takes the connector from two channels to two individual channels. If you've selected CAN-FD for your system, this allows you to take it to a standard DB9 connector. And finally, what we have is a SNAV that allows you to do an inertial measurement, and this is an option as well, that connects to your micro queue with a, a serial cable. And so there you have uh, all the items that could come with your micro queue order. Okay, so now that we've unboxed all the elements of our micro queue system, let's go through the basics of how we set the system up. The way to power the system uh, while you're at your desk or in a laboratory is to use the power over ethernet injector. So this has two connections. The first connection will be between the PoE and the micro queue. And this is how we'll get our power. So now we can see that we have uh, power to the system. The next thing we'll wanna do to make our network to the PC that we'll use in a minute for data transfer is just to come into the PC with the second cable. Um, in this case, the micro queue is set up to be the IP address server. So we have a complete network here that can communicate. So now let's go ahead and turn on. Um, part of keeping the micro queue small means that we have to be very creative with giving you information about the state. So let's turn it on and we'll start to see the different status uh, from the lights. So we powered it up. Now we can start to see uh, the LED on the left here, which is gonna blink blue while we go through the boot process. So this will take a, a little bit of time and then we should see it flash over to two green LEDs.
Okay, so now we've got the first green LED, so we're getting closer. Okay, great. So now the system is finished booting and we can go ahead and connect to it over the Wi-Fi because we have our two Wi-Fi antennas here on the front. So now I'd like to walk through how we use Pack Capture app on this case on an iPad and how we interact with a, a micro queue or even a deca queue and we're able to do Pack Live on both systems. Let's start by going into the settings. It's possible to connect to many systems using either a Wi-Fi connection or an Ethernet connection. Uh, it's very easy on the new iPad Pros to use an, a USB-C to Ethernet adapter. But it's also possible to do it with regular iPads as well. We, we do have those adapters available. And then we can launch the Pack Capture app. The first thing you'll see on the screen is we can go in and select the micro queue we'd like to work with. It remembers systems you've worked with in the past. It also scans to see systems that are available. And we see the same system displayed in the top, and that's because we do have two interfaces that we can use. I'm gonna use the ethernet interface. And then comes the username. What this does is it reserves the measurement session for that named login, and that's so someone doesn't accidentally come in and disrupt your settings or interrupt your measurement. Once we're into Pack Capture, we can see that the, a system is rendered to match the hardware that you're connected to. Here in this system, I have uh, the TAC input module, two ICS modules, as well as two CAN inputs. Across the bottom of the screen, we can see a hardware view, we can see level indicators, we can see the recording interface, we can also see our channels. And in that channel view, we have a signal view. Let's get here to an active microphone channel. We have the system setup channel, and then we can also calibrate channels as well. Next, as we move across the bottom, we have the data browser. There we can see measurements we've made and get information there. We have some specific settings, things like the base sample rate um, and then max length of time blocks. Uh, you see we have a manual mode as well as a triggered mode. Then there's a few more uh, less common settings like the color theme. If you're going to use a flick button that you can see at the bottom, that's a, a Bluetooth a uh, button that you can get off Amazon and use that to activate your measurements. And then if we go to more, we can actually see the web server on the hardware and then the help. And it's always great, I think, to know where the help is in a system. So that's under more and then help. And then finally, when you're done with your session, you can log out. So now if we go back to the hardware, in this particular case, I've got uh, an ICP microphone hooked up to channel one of the ICS module. And when you uh, select that, just tapping it with your finger, you can now look at the channel itself, all the settings, and you can just swipe across. So here's channel two, channel three, and you'll see the display update as you move across. And now if I slip it into the single channel view, now I'm looking at exactly that channel, and just like I was doing in the small view, I can swipe back. I can also pinch to get a longer time view, and I can pinch to zoom in, and a double tap will do an auto scale. Just all the type of gestures that you've come to expect with smart devices today. So what I'd like to do now is let's just do a time-based recording and then we'll start our measurement. Now you can see the time will run up and we can go back to our channel and see a live view of what it is we're recording. At the bottom, you'll see that time is running up even when we're not in the view. And now 
now that we've got a sample recording, we can go back and double tap stop, and that will finalize the measurement. So that, that's uh, all it takes to, to make a measurement. Now if we go into the browser, uh, we can see this last measurement that I made. It has a timestamp, so if we click on that, then we have some overview. But also you'll see this icon in the upper right that has um, a pencil. And there we can do an annotation. So that was two cellos doing smooth criminal. Also, uh, we can go and we can actually play it back and hear this, what we reported. So we can review our measurements and everything all here on the Pack Capture app. And now I'm just going to log out. So there's a very quick run through of the possible interaction with the Pack Capture app. Now we're going to take some time to go through the QData Manager. This uh, particular version is developed in MATLAB and the source code is available to our customers. You can see all the functions that go into that. And now let's start the app itself. We have the four tabs in the application. Uh, start just giving us an idea of what we can do. Transfer, view, and manage. So now let's go through each of those. On the transfer tab, this allows us to manage the, the different systems that we're going to interact with, and that's based on their IP address. So once we have uh, an IP, we can say, let's get measurements. And now here we're presented with a list of all the measurements that are available on the system. You can see in addition to the measurements, we have the data depots. These are the different directories where data can be stored. In this particular case, you can also edit them. And so now you can see there's the path for the data as well as the name that you'd like to give the data. Once we have a combination of a measurement and a destination, the download button becomes active and we can transfer that measurement. And now it's both on the SSD of the MicroQ as well as the drive of our laptop. So now let's go and we can take the step to preview the data. So we can go back to that same measurement. And what you see is that now we have all the different parts of the measurement that are available to us. We have throughput, we have integrity that talks about whether we have shorts or opens on our different channel lines. We can see the actual level, that's sort of a envelope of the system as well as compressed data. But let's take a look at the sound measurement and we can go ahead and plot that. And here we see uh, a preview of that data. One nice thing is sometimes you might like to see a spectrogram of that as well. So let's go ahead and, and bring that up also. And now you can see I have the time and then underneath it the corresponding frequency. And then finally, we'd like to do more than just preview the data. Let's go ahead and see how we can manage that. Once we select the depot and the right measurement, now we have our choice to export it as CSV, and there we get column headings and then the data itself. Or uh, if we click export to MATLAB, we'll get both a binary MATLAB file as well as the data loaded into the workspace. So I'd like to do that right now. And now we've exported the data as both a binary MATLAB file and to the MATLAB workspace. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is now we can see uh, in MATLAB itself, in just the, the regular command line interface, I, I have the data. We can actually interrogate that. We can see that we have the throughput, integrity, level, and compressed data as we saw in the application. And now we can continue to go down all the way to the, the level of the actual measurement data. Why don't we just take that and do a quick audio player. Let's copy my variable name. You can say player equals 
audio player. Uh, now our data, and we know the sample rate. And now we can play it back. And so that's uh, how you can interact with the QData Manager app in MATLAB itself. So now that uh, concludes the demonstration of the measurement, transfer to PC, and preview. So let's take a look at another way to use the MicroQ. As we mentioned in the unboxing video, if you own a, a docking station for the MicroQ, it allows you to charge the internal battery and the external battery, and it also gives you an opportunity to download your data simply by putting the MicroQ into the docking station and using the built-in Ethernet port. If we take a look at the back of the battery, when it's in the station, we can see the, the battery status, but there's also a built-in battery indicator, and that lets us know the status of the battery when we're out in the field. Also, on the back of the MicroQ, there's a dimple that corresponds to a dimple on the back of the external battery, and that ensures that we get them aligned properly as we attach the battery. Now we're completely on uh, battery power. When we go to start the MicroQ, it'll give us an indication of not only the available battery, but the battery that's currently being used, as well as the status of the batteries themselves. And that all comes through these two indicators. Now we can see we're using internal battery with the external battery available. And once we've completed our measurements, to make sure that we shut down the MicroQ to save our battery power. We just hold the power button until we get the two red indicators. And now the MicroQ will execute a system shutdown. If there's no measurement running, it happens quickly. If there are measurements, it makes sure it closes out all the data to make sure nothing's lost. And so that concludes our walkthrough of the MicroQ, its different use cases, the interaction of the different options, and we hope you enjoy using it. We'd like to take a few moments to talk about the proper way to handle hardware for your MicroQ when you're exchanging a module. So there are a few elements that we need to take care of to make sure the system is not damaged from ESD. The first thing we have is an ESD mat because we're not in an ESD safe environment, and that includes the wrist strap, and that will make sure that I'm at the same potential as the MicroQ. We'll also need a two millimeter Allen wrench or hex key, and then we'll have the module that we want to uh, insert to the system itself. And notice that that is in an ESD bag as well. So really, ESD is the strongest potential for damaging your system. So let's go ahead and I'll put on the wrist strap. So now through the mat, we're connected with the microcube, so we shouldn't have any shocks. When you go to remove the module from the ESD bag, please make sure that you handle it from the front or the side, tops or bottoms, but you should never touch the connector across the back. That's the greatest potential for an ESD discharge that will damage the module itself. So now we just insert the module into the microcube. And you can push it in until the jacking screw engages. Because we have a steel screw and aluminum, I find it best to turn the screw counterclockwise until you feel it drop in. That way we make sure not to cross thread the, the SC card. And now just screw the module in and the jacking screw will pull the module in and complete the connection between the module and the SC card.
please also be sure not to over tighten the screw so that you don't strip it out. Now that the module is inserted, we can go ahead and start the system up itself. And now as the system starts to boot, it will recognize there's been a hardware change. And in the boot process, it will change its configuration. It will determine if the module needs to be calibrated or not to make sure your measurements are accurate. And then when the boot is complete, you'll be ready to start your measurement process. So that concludes how we insert a module into the microcube. Today we'd like to take a minute to talk about the LIMO connectors that MECALC uses in many places on our measurement systems. LIMO provides a high quality electrical connection as well as mechanical features to make sure the plug doesn't become disengaged during your measurement. To release the cable, we need to pull back on the barrel to make sure that the latching mechanism disengages before we start to pull the cable out. And we always want to make sure that we are in front of the boot so that we're not pulling on the wire itself. When you go to insert the cable into your system, you want to make sure that the dot on the connector is aligned with the dot on the plug so that we make sure we have the right orientation. And now we can just insert it. And now we have the cable inserted into the plug. Once you're done with your measurements, the proper way is to pull back on the knurled part again so that latch releases and the plug should easily come out. If you feel that it's not released, check that you're pulling on the right part of the connector. It should not be hard to disengage. Another thing to notice is that many of the limos on our system have the same size and you want to make sure that you have the proper pins of the cable to the connector so that you don't force the pins and bend them. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. As always, you can go to QantasSeries.com for more information. On QantasSeries.com, you'll find technical specifications for our product, as well as support with tutorial videos and further documentation, and a way to connect with our support team. Thanks so much.